Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four. Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. Today we're going to talk about, well, progressives, you know, the liberal, you know, that you liberal, you know, that thing that everybody tries to malign. That is what we're going to do today because, um, you know, today I was going to have a different topic. Today I was going to talk about Donald Trump and... Uh, you know, about what he's doing with the, uh, how he has caused all of that's going on with the, the people that are killing, the people that are hurting, the people that are maiming. But then I decided, you know what? The reality is Donald Trump has, he has enough coverage on mainstream media. We don't need to do that anymore. We don't need to sit down and give this guy coverage for what the mainstream media is already doing or what, the, what I should, should I say, what the mainstream media is overdoing. So what we decided to do today is we're going to talk about what does it really mean to be progressive. And, and, and the reason I, want, I, I wanted to talk about that is a friend came into uh, Starbucks this morning and said, Hey, Bert, I want to show you something. And the something he wanted to show me was a note written by, uh, by a, a guy, last name Alan, who uh, described perfectly what it really means to be a progressive. And given that there's so much fear in using that word, I figured, you know what? Just maybe, just maybe what we'll do today is we'll go over that particular uh, essay that this young man wrote. And the reason I wanted to do that is to put a hop and skip in our step. But you know we're in election season. And right now everybody's trying to decide exactly who they're going to vote for. But let me give you first some good news. El Señor... Uh, our good old um, uh, Beto O'Rourke, in a poll that had him down by quite a bit of points, every time that poll comes out, he's up by another point. Here's my theory. My theory is if, Do if Beto O'Rourke is within five points, and according to these polls, he wins the election. And let me tell you what I, why I say that. I don't think the election is reflecting Generation Z. And if the election is not reflecting Generation Z, th those are the high schoolers. Those are the folks that, that are about 20, between 18 and 24 years old. If they're not represented in the polls, and if, as I believe, millennials are so pissed off that they are going to come and vote in bigger numbers than they normally, and it doesn't have to take a whole lot more, that is, those five points are not at all difficult to recover. Folks, if you're just joining us, please remember to go ahead and share this show. Share Politics Done Right on your Twitter, on your Tumblr, on your Facebook page, on your Facebook wall. That is the way we're going to make a difference. That is the way we're going to ensure that people continue to get the, this type of information that they otherwise wouldn't get. Because mainstream media, you know, they are owned by the corporatocracy. By, and th th these guys are good people. But they cannot put the things out that they otherwise would love to put out. And that is, that is to be expected. If somebody is paying you to advertise, how could you possibly, how could you possibly think, oh, well, they are on your favor. It, it just doesn't work that way. So what I'm asking you folks, if you're just joining us, please go ahead and share these programs like yesterday. Share them like right away. And if you're coming into the show on a podcast or a vlog vlogcast, please go ahead and share the program as well. That is how... We get we, we that is how we get what what I call geometric progression. And that's how we get our message out. Anyhow, going let, let let's get a few things with the election straightened out first. Progressives have a good chance of winning and winning big. I think the polls are underestimating uh, the counts, and I think they're underestimating the counts because as Celinda Lake told me, who is one of the more prominent pollsters, uh, she told me this at Network Netroots uh, Nation. She said 
that the reality is pollsters don't know what the model is going to look like, which means they don't know how many millennials, how many Gen Zs, how many Gen Xs, how many baby boomers. Well, we know the baby boomers are going to vote, meaning the old people are going to vote. But we don't know the other side. There are more millennials than anybody else. If they ever decided to get serious and started voting in their numbers, it will be a country run by millennials. But anyhow, so as it turns out, I want to make, make a few comments here. Uh, here in Kingwood and the surrounding areas where there's early voting, a lot of people on the right side have been attempting to intimidate people. There are folks going around with in Crenshaw vehicles, scaring people, blocking people from leaving the parking lot. And all of this, I have the data uh, to prove this. Uh, it is a lot of voter intimidate. If, 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 if in, a, in a community like mine, do, I can, we can attest to voter intimidation. It is scary for me to believe or scary for me to imagine the type of voter intimidation that's occurring elsewhere. Folks, do not allow yourself to be intimidated. Be safe, of course, but do not allow yourself to be intimidated. These guys are smelling defeat. Remember what we said. Uh, a few years back, we said these guys are on the bastion, the bastion of ending their reign. And you are on the bastion of becoming the new America, the America that represents us all, not the America that just represents a few, represent a few. So therefore, it's, you know, whenever you have these changes that are these massive changes that are occurring, there's always a last pushback, battle of the bulge. There's always something that, that, that sort of give you the impression, oh, I wonder if we're going to be able to do it or not. The truth of the matter is this. We can do it this cycle people say well maybe texas is not ready to be blue yet we can do it this cycle this is the best cycle to do it the people are mobilized and the people are voting we have to keep them voting as as uh, one of our uh, activists here in houston told me she said do not rest on your laurels every day you go vote but you have to do more than one person going to vote you must go vote, but you must make sure all those who you know of, of the progressive persuasion go ahead and vote as well. In other words, you have to be there to assist others to vote as well. That is how we do it. That is how we are going to do it. On November 6th, I don't know if I'm going to go to a party or just sit down blogging in front of the TV. Sometimes I want to just sit down blogging in front of the TV while I'm doing this stuff, but... I just may go ahead and go to a party. But here's the deal, folks. We must vote and encourage everybody else to vote. And the intimidation that they're trying, the voter suppression that they're trying in Georgia and everywhere else, look, they're on their last straw. We got to wing it. We got to tough it out. But we will win. Texas will be blue after November 6th. Take, mark my word. Texas will be blue after November 6th. As far as the governor race is concerned, I am disappointed with the support that uh, Lupe Valdez is getting from Democrats themselves. But other surprises has happened before, so we never know. So anyhow, folks, remember to go out there and vote no matter what. Beto O'Rourke is likely going to win. Beto O'Rourke is on Ted Cruz's heel by a poll that earlier I think had him down as much as 9 or 11 points. I don't remember exactly how much it was. And this poll kind of gave the indication that there was not a chance in red hell that he was going to win. My theory is Beto will be the first senator elected of the Democratic persuasion since 1988. So let, let's see what happens. Let's see if I'm right. I hope I'm right. If I'm not... Then we have a whole lot to talk about. Anyhow, title of the show. We should all be progressive liberals if we understood what it meant. Subtitle, the left has allowed the right to corrupt the meaning, the real meaning of progressive liberal because understanding its true value would ensure the demise of unfettered capitalism and the creation of a more egalitarian society. And that's the truth. If, if lib the reason why there was a Powell Manifesto trying to infiltrate schools and everywhere else because they could not take Americans getting intelligent 
because as they got intelligent, they started asking the questions. And the questions that they asked, why should I bust my butt to work for Corporation X when the people that do the least amount of work in that corporation are the ones that are most rewarded? And not only most rewarded, the ones that take home the spoils. We build the cars. Why shouldn't we negotiate for a part of those profits? We build everything. Why is it that only shareholders are the ones who get all the profits? Well, people say, oh, well, they're the ones who take the risk. BS. We have bought into that crap for so long. The reason why the shareholders get dividends and the, the people in the companies don't is because the shareholders take risks with their money. But what does the average worker risk? That guy who is building a bridge, he risks his arm, his limb, his life. That person who is working in the chemical factory risks his life getting burned, acid, getting sick from the fumes that he breathes from those chemicals that he works with. People in the petrol industry, the workers, they risk body, soul. They risk a the time with their kids. So the theory that they used to do to keep you calm in order to tell you the reason why it is okay for you to get a pittance while the shareholders who sit at their pool with a bottle of tea or, a, or caviar or whatever, they deserve it because they're putting their money at risk. And if for some reason that company fails, it is their money at risk. Well, they get to write it off. If you lose your arm, your leg, your eye, if you get cancer, if you get uh, some sort of those, and, and those pulmonary diseases, you don't, get a re you don't get a redo. You don't get a bankruptcy. You don't get any of that. We have to change the paradigm. We have to start talking about equity. We have to start talking about how to make things more fair, more egalitarian. That is what we need to do. And the only way to do that is through progressive policies. Only progressive policies give you a society that is, in fact, egalitarian. Don't let anybody fool you. It's only through progressive values. And sorry about that. I was trying to prop up this phone so that I could see what is going on. Anyhow, the election is existential. This election is existential. Republicans are in panic mode and are starting to lie about the meaning of electing Democrats. In the process, they malign the real meaning of liberalism and progressivism. A friend in Starbucks walked in just in time to point me to the words of a wise liberal that we will describe today. It is the reason why it is urgent that we all vote and make sure progressives throughout the country are voting. It is the reason why we have to ensure progressives throughout the country are voting. You know, um, the, the other good thing that, I, that happened today is when you see a conservative paper like the Fort Worth Herald, I think it's called, and the Dallas Morning News endorse Rourke over Cruz, the conservative, you know something is happening. When the Houston Chronicle, when the Houston Chronicle endorses Beto O'Rourke, you know something is happening. Folks, Texas is going blue. And I'm telling you, endorsement doesn't always necessarily mean anything, but the fire. The fire is with the progressives, and it doesn't help that we have a president who, uh, who, t who, who s calls fire in a full theater. And we know that is pretty much illegal. We have a president who is really responsible, and I know a lot of people don't like to hear this, but I will say it absolutely so, and I will say it, and I will mean it. If we had a different kind of president, we would not have had the violence by the white nationalists that we are having right now. When President Obama spoke about the risk that these people presented, not Obama, but his, his administration, people went berserk. But th these things didn't just happen. The right wing, the right wing crazies, I'm talking about the crazy folks now, didn't just happen. They were the, the flames were fanned by people that should know better. They have them believe in all kinds of lies. If it's on TV, it is true. If it's on radio, it is true. 
That's why you had a guy go shoot up a pizza place. And why did he do that? He did that because he wanted, he heard Hillary Clinton was running a sex ring or a, 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 a trading sex people or a sex trafficking ring. He heard that on one of his networks. That's why you need us. Because again, who refutes them? Who does? Who refutes these people? Who does? So anyhow, I think, folks, we're going for a blue wave here in Texas and in many other places. I think Georgia is going to elect its first Democratic governor in God knows how long. And, and imagine the first elected Democratic governor is likely to be a black woman. Amazing, given a state a state that has such a history. But just may happen. Just may happen in Maryland too. And it just may happen in somewhere else. I don't remember what the other, uh, the other town or the other state is. But folks, do you know what time it is? It's time for the weekly blog post. Okay, here it goes. Why I am a liberal, progressive, and you should too. I was about to write a blog post that was going to be to hit Donald Trump pretty hard for his complicity in the killings in Louisville, Kentucky, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and the right-wing thug who mailed bombs to Trump's hit list. Then a friend of mine walked in and showed me an open letter that Larry Allen wrote. Allen asked the people, as many as he could, to repost it. So we did the favor. We also posted the article. Many of us explain our liberal progressive values in a piecemeal manner. Larry Allen went all out and wrote an easily digestible prose. He wrote the following. An open letter to friends, quote, open quote, an open letter to friends and family who are shocked to discover I'm a liberal. I've always been a liberal, but that doesn't mean what a lot of you apparently think it does. And I think I've told you guys the story about me and a person uh, in Starbucks, a, a Republican woman that I was speaking to for a very, very long time. And uh, she started to agree with me on many issues, including single-payer Medicare for all. She actually agreed with it. And, you know, I kind of felt bad because I felt she thought she was speaking, given where I live, I figured she thought she was speaking to a Republican. So I fessed up at the end. I said, ma'am, do you know I am a left-wing, progressive, liberal person. The woman's face changed. She turned very red and with, with, you know, and, and with a deep honesty. And this woman was very honest in her feelings, in her thoughts. You could just see she exuded it. She said, when I said, okay, ma'am, you know, I'm a left-wing liberal. I'm a progressive, uh, a progressive liberal Democrat. She looks at me, then straight in my eyes, and she said, But you're so nice. Ma'am, um, all liberals or most liberals are nice, just like most conservatives, in my humble opinion, are nice until we get onto these particular issues and then people let their people go, go bat you know what crazy. And then I said, you know, there's a group in town called Liberal Ladies Who Lunch. You should join them sometime. Take a couple of conservative Republican women, sisters of the Confederacy. Take them to lunch. Lunch with these women. What you're going to find out is absent some of the politics, you have more in common than you have with me. You have more in common than you have with most. Anyway, uh, here it goes. Let's break it down, shall we? Because quite frankly, I'm getting a little tired of being told what I believe and what I stand for. Spoiler alert, not every liberal is the same, though the majority of liberals I know think along roughly these lines. So here are the 16 items he says is, makes up a liberal. And it goes as follows. Item number one. I believe a country should take care of its weakest members. A country cannot call itself civilized when its children, disabled, sick, 
and elderly are neglected. Period. So that's his item number one. His item number two says the following. I believe health care is a right, not a privilege. Somehow that's interpreted as I believe Obamacare is the end of all bills. This is not the case. I am fully aware that the ACA has problems, that a national health care system would require everyone to chip in, and that it's impossible to create one that is devoid of flaws, but I've yet to hear an argument against it that makes let people die because they can't afford health care a better alternative. I believe health care should be a far cheaper than it should be far cheaper than it is and that everyone should have access to it. And no, I'm not opposed to paying higher taxes in the name of making it happen. And that is where it gets a lot of people. They think, oh, my God, if we have health care for everybody, the taxes are going to go through the roof. No, no, no. Your taxes are going to rise substantially to take care of health care. But it's going to be a hell of a lot less than the premiums you pay when you have health care through your company or elsewhere. In other words, you pay more taxes, but in the aggregate, you save a hell of a lot more money because you're not giving away money to shareholders, to advertising, and all these other things. So, folks, it makes a whole lot of sense. Item number three. I believe education should be affordable and accessible to everyone. It doesn't necessarily have to be free thought. It just works in the countries. So, I mean, it works in other countries, so it should work here. It can work here, but at the end of the day, there is no excuse for students graduating college saddled with five or six figure debt. And that is so true. Why do we saddle our kids with that kind of debt? Number four, I don't believe your money should be, ta should be taken from you and given to, an, uh, to people who don't want to work. I have literally never encountered anyone who believes this ever. I just have a massive moral problem, a massive moral problem with a society where a handful of people can possess the majority of the wealth while there are people literally starving to death, freezing to death, or dying because they can't afford to go to the doctor. Fair wages, lower housing costs, universal health care, affordable education, and the wealthy actually paying their fair share would go a long way toward alleviating this somewhat believing that it makes me a communist. You don't have to believe, you, you, you don't have to call me a communist because I want to do what's right by people. Think about it. You don't have to call one a communist for that. He's just a humanist. Number five, I don't throw around, I'm willing to pay higher taxes lightly. If I am suggesting Something that involves paying more? Well, it's because I'm fine with paying my share as long as it is actually going to something besides lining corporate pockets or bombing other countries while Americans are dying without health care. That's a very smart one. Very smart one. Sixth, I believe companies should be required to pay their employees a decent, livable wage Somehow, this is always interpreted as me wanting burger flippers to be able to f afford a penthouse apartment and a Mercedes. What it actually means is that no one should have to work three full-time jobs just to keep their head above water. Restaurant servers should not have to rely on tips. Multi-billion dollar companies should not have employees on food stamps. Work workers shouldn't have to work themselves into the ground just to barely make sense. Meat and minimum wage would be enough for someone to work 40 hours a week and live. I am not a Christian. I have no desire to stop Christians from being Christians, to close churches, to ban the Bible for forbidden, uh, forbid year in school, etc. By the way, prayer in school is not illegal Compulsory prayer is school is and should be illegal. All I ask is that Christians recognize why, why my right to live according to my beliefs. When I get pissed off at that politicians are trying to legislate scripture into law, I am not offended by Christianity. I get, I'm getting, rather, I'm offended that you're trying to force me to live by region. 
You know, you know how you get really upset at the thought of Muslims imposing Sharia law on you. That's how it feels about Christians trying to impose biblical laws on to be Christians. You, you, you do your thing, do your thing, just don't force it on to me. That is important. That is so important. Item number nine. I don't believe illegal immigrants should come to America and have the world at their feet, especially since this isn't what they do. Spoiler. Undocumented immigrants are ineligible for all those programs they've supposedly abused. And if they're stealing your job, it's because your employer is hiring illegally. I am not I'm not opposed to deporting people who are here illegally, but I believe there are far more humane ways to handle undocumented immigrants than our current practices, i.e. detaining children, spitting up, splitting up families, ending DACA. Oh, that is a part of history that one can say just maybe repeating itself. Number 10, I don't believe the government should regulate everything but since greed is such a driving force in our country, we need regulations to prevent, uh, to prevent cut corners, environmental destruction, tainted food, unsafe materials, a consumable goods or medical equipment, etc. It's not that I want the government's hands on everything. I just don't trust people trying to make money to ensure that their products, practices, etc. are actually safe. Is the government devoid of shadiness? Of course not. But with those liable for bills, bills came out. For those liable for bills. Okay, so continuing, of course not. But with those regulations in place, consumers have recourse. If they are harmed and companies are liable for medical bills, environmental cleanup, etc. Just kind of seems like common sense when the alternative to government regulation is letting companies bring their bottom line into where? The equation. I believe our current administration is fascist. Not because I dislike them or because I can't get over an action, but because I've spent too many years reading and learning about the Third Reich to miss, to miss the similarities. Not because, they are, th not because any administration I dislike must be Nazi, but because things are actually mirroring authoritarian and fascist regimes of the past. Numero 12. I believe the systemic racism and misogyny in our society is much more than many people think. And <laughs> I'm glad you saw that. And desperately needs to be addressed, which means those with privilege, white, straight, male, economic, etc. need to start listening even if you don't like what you're hearing so we can understand so we can dismantle everything that's causing people to be marginalized hmm. insightful number 13 i am not interested in coming for after your blessed guns nor is anyone serving in government what i am interested in uh sensible policies introducing background checks that just might save one person's a uh, toddler, a life by the hand of someone who should not have had a gun. Numero 14. I believe in so-called political correctness. I prefer to think of it as social politeness. If I call you, Chuck, and say you say uh, your preferred, or, or back up, it says your preferred, whatever, whatever, whatever. Hey, let me, let me start over 14. I believe in so-called political correctness. I prefer to think it's social politeness. If I call you Chuck and you say you prefer to be called Charles, I'll call you Charles. It is a polite thing to do. Not because everyone is, dedicated, uh, is a dedicated snowflake, but because, as Maya Angelou put it, when we know better, we do better. When someone tells you that a term or phrase is more accurate, less harmful than the one you're using, you now, you now know better. So why not do better? How does it hurt you not to do better? Number 15. I believe in funding sustainable energy, including offering education to people currently working in coal or gas-related uh, gas jobs. 
there are too many sustainable options available for us to continue with coal and oil. Sorry, billionaires. Maybe by investing in some of uh, in investing in some of them, who knows? And here, lastly, number sixteen. I believe that women should not be treated as a separate class of human. They should be made as the same men who do the same work and uh, <laughs> should have the same rights as men and should be free from abuse. Why on earth shouldn't they be? Why on earth shouldn't they be? So folks, I think that about covers it. That was from, uh, that was from Larry Allen. I think that about covers it is what Larry says. Uh, bottom line is that I am a liberal because I think we should take care of each other. That doesn't mean you should work 80 hours a week so your lazy neighbor can get all your money. It just means I don't believe there is any research in which preventable suffering is an, is an acceptable outcome as long as there is money to be saved. And that is the blog of the week folks this is a call in show give us a call at 646-716-5812 again this is a call in show give us a call at 646-716-5812 i'll be more than happy to take your call i would actually I'd love to get your calls but right now we have no calls but so what i'll do right now is put on a little pitch and that is as follows this is a progressive show that needs your support i'm asking you so kindly to provide uh to, to be a part of of to, to, to be a part of what we do here. Be a part of uh, helping us help the system. Be a part of us making a difference. You can do it. Go to uh, patreon.com slash politics done right. Again, that is p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash politics done right. Please join and be a part of the politics done right family. Do remember that uh, with that membership, you're going to get How to Make America Utopia. It's the book that I'm currently writing. And guess what? As I release a chapter, I'll release it online for those people who are subscribers. They'll automatically be able to reach the chapter and read the chapter as I write. Uh, if they have suggestions, there's a corresponding group called How to Make America Utopia. And if you subscribe to that part particular group and you or, or become a member of that particular group and you have ideas within that group and you say, Berto, I suggest that this make it into the book because or whatever, I will likely uh, consider putting that in the book. And if it is placed in the book, you will be, uh, what's the word? C we'll have a citation towards you in the event that that's what, it, uh, and like, of course, we'll ask you permission to cite you in the book before we go ahead and use your name in the book. But uh, if it's your idea, we always like to ensure that ideas go to the, f to the folks who had the idea. You look at all these oil companies and otherwise, do you really think the people who really designed the patent really made any much out of it? No, they didn't. That's just how the system works. The people that gets rewarded are the people sitting on their butt. They like to look, give people on welfare a hard time, right? You may go ahead and hear about all those guys standing up on a corner with their pants hanging down and getting taking getting over get getting welfare or or that it, it, what they normally like to bring a big fat mama and then she's uh, going to the grocery store and buying steaks with her food stamps etc that's a caricature that they like to provide right the biggest recipient of welfare is actually these rich folk biggest recipients of welfare because they don't get the twenties here or the hundred there or the twelve hundred there or whatever they get their full Pledge monies. So don't ever allow folks to fool you about that. Remember clearly that, uh, in effect, uh, we are just as good. Anyhow, please go to patreon.com slash politics done right. Again, that is P A T R E O N dot com slash politics done right. Please become a part of the family. We need you. We need you. We need you. And what else again? We need you. We need you. And we need you. That is how we continue to get the progressive message across. Right now, unlike the Coke side of the aisle, meaning the right side of the aisle, that have their people completely and 100% funded, we are not so lucky that that has occurred with any one of these programs. And that is by design. That is actually by design. Uh, you, the, the folks that we should be considering allies many times they don't behave like allies and what they'll try to let you believe is oh well um the reason why is because well you know you know how it goes you're not a biden but we won't fall for that 
Folks, the telephone number is, and I'm about to put it back on the screen, the telephone number is 646-716-5812. Again, that number is 646-716-5812. Why don't you give us a call? Uh, I'm going to go to the, let's see if there's anything at the website, or uh, not the website, but anything on the page that I need to address. But folks, give us a call, 646-716-5812. Michael Rudnan, to me, progressives mean any policy positions which prioritize the people and the environment above uh, all other countries. Most liberals support these ideals, even if they don't call themselves progressives. A large fraction of conservatives do as well, even as they, they decry socialism. The progressives' real opposition is big money, corporation, and or politics. That is so true. Okay, Chase Escamilla, how you doing, my brother? Nice to see you here, Chase. Uh, let's see, Michael Rudin and Gen Z are starting off politically active, much more so than the previous generations. I notice that they give me hope for the future. I've always said that the, our future are in the hands of young people now. A lot, those of you my age, let's say 48 to, 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 to death, you know, it's time for us to really hold off on the back seat and start, di start, what should I say, start passing on whatever knowledge we have to the older, to the younger generation, because they're the ones who are going to have to carry the bag. They're the ones who's, who are going to be working very, very hard going forward. Okay, case Chase Escamilla, Mike C. If better is Irish, does it matter? <laughs> okay, Chase Escamilla, fifty four, fifty two. Beto, what what I saw, what I saw today? Excellent, excellent, excellent. Escamilla, yes. Okay, Mike. Uh, let's see, Mike Cizak. What will you do, or what will you all do when GOP wins the house? Ha 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 ha. I'll cry. I'm not too. Uh, I'll probably cry. I would cry because I think if the United States House is maintained by the Senate, there's going to be some sort of a crisis. And the crisis is not anything like no fighting or anything like that. It is just going to be a crisis. Anyhow, let's see what else we got here. Lawrence Sim gave me a Facebook post. I'll link later. Fire in the theater or what Trump say now? <laughs> no, what I was saying is that uh, Trump's, Trump's presidency has been somebody in a theater is calling fire in a theater that's all i was trying to say there michael ren are you talking about the rhetoric that's caused so many right-wing extreme yes that's what i'm talking about okay daniel ledo my brother uh if, if healthcare is a right then progressives are okay with slavery oh god oh god ledo do you understand the words that you say when you say them ledo Ledo, Ledo, Ledo. Okay. Uh, no, you can't say it's okay for slavery because we're talking about human beings. Okay. We're talking about the, the selling, the enslavement, and the whipping of human beings. When, when you are tested here, none of that applies. Absolutely none of that applies. Only would apply if for some reason they had to see in you because of something you may have swallowed. And you have to remember something. Anyhow, let's go to the next one. Egberto, Larry didn't write this. Check your FB post where two others gave the original author. Thank you so kindly for informing me about that, Michael. I'll go ahead and find the authors and then correct it. But uh, it did say underneath the article written by Larry. But I'll go ahead and uh, do some more fact checking on that. Uh, look like it, today I'm going to have two fact checks in one day. I'm slipping. Okay, I'll check to make sure that, that you're correct, uh, Mike Cisak. Excellent list of progressive priorities, but the overreaching message, government should take better care of poor and struggling, and corporations should pay their workers fairly. Absolutely so. No argument there at all. Let's see. That looks like that created some sort of conversation because Daniel Lado said, yes, but the cost to you and me is our liberty. What the hell are you talking about? There are several types of liberty and several types of enslavement. And right now, most Americans are slaves. Most Americans don't have the freedom you're talking about. Most Americans are slaves to the corporation, and as such, they live and breathe whatever the corporation tells them to do. And most of the times, they're held hostage. How? Well, if they have a pre-existing condition and a medical plan there, they'll forever be able to use that medical plan. But if they decided to uh, leave or get laid off or whatever, that's an open channel. Okay, let's continue. 
Michael Ledo, we have different definitions that term the freedom to work yet still live in poverty. <laughs> oh, thank you, Michael Rudden. That is a slick one, and you're absolutely correct. Daniel Ledo, then just invent a new definition. Unfortunately, only you are using it uh, wrong. And if we can't agree on basics, there's no there's no point discussing it further. You want to talk about this with somebody else, folks? Telephone number six 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 four six seven one six five eight one two. Had to take a taste of coffee. Six four six seven one six five eight one two. Six four six seven one six five eight one two. Okay, Daniel Lado, laughing out loudly. What you mean is that since I don't agree with you redefining language, then you will take your ball and go home. Oh, God. <laughs> Guys, uh, keep commenting. Let me go ahead and refresh my comments to see if there's any more to read. But anyhow, folks, um, remember, again, this is a call-in show, 646-716-5812. Uh, let, let's talk about, um, well, let, let's see if we had another one here. Uh, don't see any there. Okay. Let's talk about what to expect after the house is won, after we win the house. What do we expect? Let me inform folks about something that is very important. We may actually win the Senate as well. I think Beto O'Rourke is going to win. And I think the person in, uh, in the, the lady in Arizona is going to win. Uh, Florida, of course, will hold on to that seat. I think also um, Heidi Heitkamp, forget about the polls, is likely to win as well. But we'll see what happens. I think the blue wave is going to be bigger than most people think now. I had my doubts for quite a long time. And I continue to have my doubts, but I'm taking a more optimistic poll, begging folks to take others to the polls because we are right at the cusp of re releasing something big. We're right here. If you do it, if you turn Texas blue, the shock wave that's going to send through the, Demo the, the Republican Party It'll automatically force them to the table. It'll automatically change the structure of their party because no law they would have seen them they would have seen themselves throw the most vile, racist, homo homophobic, xenophobic, the, of all those things. They would have seen them do all of that and lose. We ought to remember they didn't it's not like they won the la the first election. They've been losing popular votes for a long time now. But an aberration gave a non-democratic fashion of putting someone in power undemocratically. Undemocratically. So that's what we're talking about. So I think we have a very good chance of turning Texas blue. Now this week, folks, I'm going to be burning the candle from two ends again because I'll be going early in the morning to KPFT to work that fun drive out there. Uh, we are in fun driving season, not only at KPFT, but here at my show. I'd love for you to go ahead and, and become a patron. I'd love for you to do a, uh, I would love for you to go ahead and click on uh, patreon.com slash politics done right. The link is on the page as well. If you're on Blog Talk Radio, you can actually go to, uh, just go ahead and go to patreon.com slash politics done right from your browser. Just type it in your browser, patreon.com slash politics done right. Let's do this, folks. Let's support the folks that are supporting us. Let's support the folks that are moving it forward. Let's support the folks that are, that are fighting to be a part of independent media to make sure that you are taken care of, to make sure that you're informed, and to put the fear of lying to you into, the, to, into those politicians. And yes, Donald Trump doesn't matter. He's at his pinnacle right now. But you know what? In the long run, he will. In the long run, he will. Because you know what? When the Congress turns over in November, we are going to have a whole lot of stuff exposed. A whole lot of stuff is going to be exposed that Devin Nunes has been keeping silent, keeping quiet. And by the way, Nunes may actually lose his seat as well. If this wave really materializes, and you know, there are, there are inklings, there are little things that are starting to occur. There are little things that are starting to occur that give the impression that it could be, after all, a blue wave. It could be, after all, a blue wave. Seven, six, four, what's the number? Oh, let me get back to the telephone number. Put that back on the screen. Telephone number 
646-716-5812. Again, that number, 646-716-5812. Let's see if I have any more messages. Okay. All right, Daniel Lado. Oh, Daniel Lado is back at it. Cry. Let's see. Oh, it looks like we have another long discussion going here. Let me get in between them. Um, okay, political correctness is not about being polite, but about denying truth. Oh boy. I, sometimes I wonder, Brother Lado, where do you get the definitions of what you're saying? Political correctness has nothing to do with that. Political correctness is like don't call people names that were normally in the past used to be okay but really was never okay. We were just, because we were a patriarchal society, we were allowed to call our dress women a certain way. We were allowed to do things to, to women that really ain't good, ain't right. It's wrong. Women are just as good as men, just as intelligent as men. In fact, I have a tendency to believe more intelligent. But anyhow, it is important. Political correctness, the definition you gave is absolutely incorrect. Let me see, if, uh, Kathleen Morgan. Uh, how, do <laughs> Kathleen? That was a great way to say. It. Kathleen Morgan asked him, "How do you figure?" Then uh, Michael Rudnan said, "Yet again, we have such different definitions that it's not worth talking any further. But you really want to understand the other side. I'll make it simple. Don't be an, you know what? <laughs> that you know." Uh, I find it ironic how the right always automatically change the definitions of things to fit into a to fit into a false narrative. You know, they're they're the best at false narratives and they somehow are able to do that. I think it's becoming increasingly clear. This is Michael that Daniel Edo, in clear that whom a uh, worm has turned, a cultural and political shift is taking place and it isn't good for the progressive fascists. Hell, if just 20% of blacks got off the Democratic plantation, then Democrats would never win an election again. Let me first forewarn, uh, there's an there's a, there's a, there's a astroturf movement going around called uh, something like break off from it or just get away or I don't remember what the, the call letters are. And the idea behind that is all the Sanders supporters and black folks who support the, the, um, the, the Democratic Party, they have this thing called just walk away. I think that's what they call it, walk away. It's a joke. All right. It's a joke. It is a third. It's a movement that's trying to tell folks that are not going to be Republicans, not going to be conservatives, that somehow those folks that they're following are no good for them. So just walk away. In effect, it is saying just forget about them and, and do your own thing. And in effect, do nothing, because if you do nothing, we win. It's not a progressive. Uh, it's not a progressive meme. It's not a progressive hashtag think it's just walk away or walk away or something like that it's not a progressive hashtag it is something that was put out there again by the plutocracy in order to try to create disruption and it's a f another form of voter suppression that they hope but i think that type of suppression people are too intelligent to fall for it people are much too intelligent to fall for it and they won't they won't uh, so here is the deal. Uh, it, earlier I put, uh, her, her, earlier on, uh, <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, I, I have to address that at some other time. Um, so we have to be careful with uh, all these movements. A lot of them are false movements, and this is one of them that's a false movement. Okay, Michael Rudnin, I bet you're rushing through reading the comments, misreading a lot. Okay, I don't think I am misreading the comments, but, but I probably I'm just saying it out incorrectly. But um, I understand what you're saying, Michael Rudnan. Okay, pardon the repeat. To me, progressives mean any policy positions which prioritize the people and the environment above all other concerns. Of course, that's what we all believe. Most liberals support these ideals, even if they don't call themselves progressives. Ab absolutely so. A large fraction of conservatives do as well. Exactly. That's the point. That's the point. Even as they decry socialism. Yes, they want their Social Security. They want their Medicare. They want all of that. But somehow, they hate socialism. The progressives... Real position is big money, corporate corruption over our politics. It is, it, it, rather, the progressives' real opposition is big money, 
corporate corruption over our politics. And that is very, very true. Okay, Marco Rudnan now. Crisis. Will it be a financial crash over our trillion dollar deficit or global warming <laughs> with the less than 12 years to go before we can do anything, before we can do anything about it? What's going to hit us first? The crash, Michael Rudnan. Come on, you know that. A crash is a crash is forthcoming. Uh, based on the current economic model, we cannot help but have a stock market crash that's going to bring the whole damn system down for a while. No doubt. No doubt. And uh, you can mark my word on that. Okay, Daniel Ledo, please post a cry video. Would you would love to have it cheer me up when I'm feeling blue? Hmm. I'm not sure what that is about, Michael Rudnan. Uh, or rather, I mean, Daniel Ledo. Not sure. <laughs> Michael Rudnan trolling much? Or are you really that much of a saint? <laughs> I love the discussions between some of our of our of our, um, of our readers or, or watchers or listeners. Some of I mean, some of it has the best material out there. Some of it has the best material. Forced labor is slavery. You're right, and that's what and that's what you guys believe in. You don't want collective bargaining. You don't want any of those things. Forced labor. Okay, Daniel Ledo. Nobody's forcing anybody to work. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, you are. But that, you know, I mean, the thing about it is because somebody don't have a whip and a chain and a ball, it uh, doesn't mean that you're not enslaved. And slavery is not only of the physical type, but of the mind. But I won't go in that because that, that doesn't go in concert with what the show is about. Breaking Trump's xenophobia is shown as he sends 5,200 soldiers over to the southern border to block the caravan. We are talking about refugees who are walking here with barely more than the clothes on their backs, not a national security risk. Do you know what message that sends to the rest of the world? Think about this, folks. And this is, this is where we have a heartless president and a heartless people who think what he's doing is okay. When America, when, when the pilgrims and the people, the settlers came to the United States or what was then just land when they came here to land that was that was revered by the people who lived here they believed in no ownership you take you you you, you had steward of what it wherever you were you had steward of the land wherever you were because after all before you got there land was there when you're gone land will be there so land ownership is an interesting thing right i've always wondered about that can you really own land then does that say that after a family owns, after all the land is owned by a select few, that somehow there's no more land for anybody else because it stays? In the, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Does it make sense to own land or to be steward of the land while you're alive? Maybe own the property on top of the land? I don't know. You know, these are complex issues. But anyway, when the, the when the settlers came to the United to, to to America, they came to conquer. And not only did they came to conquer, they maimed, they killed, and then they brought slaves to work this land that they conquered. That was their modus operandi. The people that are walking up south from the south, because of many times problems in the south created by our globalism we are going to send an army to meet them we are going to send the national guard and the united states army to defend the border against children and people escaping a bad situation they are coming to the united states with the expectation to work they are coming to the united states with the expectation of doing something positive we came to America and conquered. We came to America and killed off those who helped us while conquering. Now, does that make any sense, people? Do you know what that shows to the rest of the world? My God. 
Bolso, Bolso, uh, Bolsonaro, whatever the name of the new Brazilian president uh, that just got elected, Bolsonaro, he must be saying, yes, Trump is just continuing the lead. Egberto, no. Conservatives like old definitions, not how the words are actually used. Language is fluid. It changes with usage. Our conversations here seem evidence of that. Let me correct one thing, though, Rudnan. There are certain things that are absolute, right? And we know what conservatives stand for in today's world. And we know what progressives stand for. We know what liberals stand for. And we know what neoliberals stand for. Now, m conservatives and the like, they change the meanings of things to suit their, not their theory, but to suit how they have to convince other people of doing things. In other words, they may change their narrative to bring people in to vote for them, but the ultimate results are never changed. The ultimate results are never changed. But folks, we're getting to the end of the program. One more pitch, please. Remember, folks, it's a call-in show. And uh, in the future, I hope you call in, 646-716-5812. But right now, I'd like to remind you guys that, uh, to please go to patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com, slash politics done right. Again, that is P A. T-R-E-O-N dot com slash politics done right and become a member of the politics done right independent media media that tells you the truth nothing but the truth nothing but the truth unlike what you get from many other places nothing but the truth folks my name is Egberto Willies this is politics done right thank you so kindly for being a part of the show you have a wonderful rest of the day. Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S, that is, at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics Done right. One, two, three, four.